we will have Asanka because it's true that, okay, some companies have issues to publish new APIs, but it seems also we need new users of APIs, like maybe citizen developers. So what is about low code? And this is why Asanka will share with us today. Hello, Asanka, how are you? Hey, Mehdi. I'm doing good. How are you? Good to see you I'm again. Doing well, I invite you to share your slide and so uh, you can make your full time with us today. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning, good uh, afternoon, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Hope uh, you can see my screen. Uh, so um, I'll give a quick uh, introduction about myself and then uh, jump into the topic. Uh, so uh, this slide is a little bit crowded, but I'll uh, give I'll walk you through quickly. Uh, so I started my career as a, a programmer and then uh, worked in product engineering and product architecture for a long time. And if you can see on the top uh, contribution to open source uh, for a while now, and then working on many distributed uh, systems, uh, building systems, and then contributing as a middleware developer and architect for a while. Um, and uh, today I'm uh, basically working as the chief technology evangelist for WSO2 and then telling the uh, WSO2 story. Uh, but today I'm not going to talk about WSO2. If you are interested, you can walk to our booth. Uh, so that's about myself. So uh, this is a continuation from yesterday. I think uh, if you join yesterday event, uh, we had two great keynotes, uh, like uh, Jeff Lawson started uh, the session by explaining the content from his book. Uh, so this is the picture of my copy of the book and from the uh, number of bookmarks that you can see uh, in the picture, uh, you can see how much I love the book as well as how much I use the content in the book as well. And then Eric uh, K, Eric uh, Newcomer, the CTO at WSO2, actually my boss. Uh, so he came and explained about the new uh, paradigm shift or the uh, new uh, cloud native engineering and how it is affecting. So if I summarize, summarize what uh, we discussed yesterday, it's about the digital experiences um, is the key and Providing a unique experience is what every organization should focus on. And how we do it, basically, we do it using software. And then again, Jeff clearly mentioned you can't build, buy uh, these uh, unique experiences. You have to build it. And the most uh, interesting quote in his uh, talk, as well as in the book, is build versus die. Actually, I completely agree with him. Without building these unique digital experiences, uh, the organizations cannot survive. And cloud native engineering furling this uh, effort and uh, taking it to the next level by helping uh, to build uh, the scalable and uh, resilient systems that can uh, cater the demand. And who's doing this work? It's about the developers. Developers are the one who's building these uh, uh, systems and providing this unique digital experience for the end users by uh, bringing different type of innovative ideas. So my uh, session today, basically during next 20 minutes, what I'm going to discuss is about the uh, developer experience and how the uh, the journey a developer is taking today through this low code and pro code um, and what kind of issues they are facing as well as how we can uh, make a, a better environment for the developers to be productive and uh, keep on focusing on delivering this digital experience for uh, the end users. So I say the software industry is like the movie industry. I think uh, Alicia, who was the previous uh, speaker, she uh, mentioned a little bit about her involvement in the uh, movie industry as well. So that's a good uh, entry point for my uh, uh, argument here. So why I say the software industry is like the movie industry, because there are a lot of parallels, uh, similarities between these two industries. And if you look at movies, like we take an idea, go into production, release it, take the 
feedback and then we do a, a reproduction of the same movie after some time. Similar to software, we take uh, great ideas, uh, build the products and then release it, take feedback and reiterate with that. And movies like they have a great platform to support these different teams that we will talk about platforms uh, at the end of the session. I mean, uh, at the latter part of the session uh, and uh, connect these different teams who's, uh, ha who has a, a single objective and uh, working towards the same goal. So uh, this, uh, this creativity and the nature of uh, how these two industries are operating, um, the, um, I can see a lot of similarities. That's why I call it as the software industry is similar to movie industry. So we talk about the creativity there and actually the code generated by or code written by the developers uh, are creative as well, because that is how these uh, creative experiences are bringing into the market. So the innovative ideas should uh, create a differentiator as well as it has to cater the consumer demand. And uh, as you know, not like uh, earlier days, we are not working on a fixed budget related projects now. We are working on products, digital products that is continuously evolving and adapting to the changes required in the market. So in the, uh, the growth hacking terms, we call it as the North Star. So developers have, uh, they require to focus on that particular objective and move towards that. So that's why I uh, claim code is creative. So another aspect of the developer is developers are visual. OK, uh, so uh, as an example, uh, before pandemic, I think when we used to go to workplaces, we spend most of our time in front of uh, a whiteboard. Actually, that's what I do in most of my time as well. Like before getting into any activity, I spend a lot of time in front of the uh, whiteboard. What we do, basically, we uh, draw flow charts, we draw sequence diagrams, we draw uh, class diagrams, and then data flow diagrams, various diagrams, and trying to brainstorm as well as share ideas. And that is how we plan. A lot of time, like even if we can't find a, a whiteboard, what we do at least take a napkin and draw these uh, pictures. Even when we go into pair programming, what's the first thing that we do? We look at the diagram and then we discuss what type of a logic that we have included inside the code that we require to review, what type of interaction. And then when it comes to uh, the UI development, the uh, UI engineers are creating a lot of wireframes and then uh, bringing that experience before we move into actual development. So that's why I came, I, I, I claim that developers are visual too. And the most uh, complaints are getting uh, during these days since uh, developers are working remotely is missing whiteboards. Yes, we have digital whiteboards, but I don't think it is giving the same experience we used to have, but I think those technologies are improving and we will get uh, the similar experience soon as well. So then if uh, uh, the code is creative, developers are visual, then why they don't draw code? Even there are a lot of low code platforms are available. Uh, so the main problem is uh, the uh, there are a bunch of uh, uh, compatibility issues that we see a pro code the developer cannot use existing low code platform. So basically, if you look at inside an organization, these two groups work in uh, two silos. That's why even I call this as the low code pro code chasm because there's no connectivity in between uh, these two groups or uh, there's no collaboration in between these two groups. And low codes are mainly targeted for uh, ad hoc and citizen developers. And there's a perception that low code is for semi uh, technical people. So that's the main uh, problem that why pro code developers are not 
uh, using um, the low code platforms. So not only that, that uh, we did a detailed analysis and even I published this article sometime back about what are the issues that we see in uh, low code platforms. So I took a uh, few key points in that particular article. And if you are interested, I have put the URL uh, on the slide that you can go and read the complete article. The first problem is uh, this uh, target audience is basically citizen and ad hoc developers for these uh, diagrams. Even some of these uh, low code tools, it is not using standard uh, or developer friendly diagramming notations because that is what developers like to use. And then uh, the second problem is it is one way. Why I call it one way? Like once you do the diagram, diagram create uh, a code most of the time using a, a DSL or, or a domain uh, specific language. Once you create the code, you can't edit the code. Uh, and I, once you edit the code, uh, it will not draw the diagram because it is one way. And the generated code, most of the time, it's kind of not a clean code that you can understand. It's basically based on uh, that particular uh, platform standards. And uh, it's not something that human readable at all. So because of that, it doesn't uh, satisfy the typical software uh, development lifecycle stages, like there's no collaboration uh, between teams because of that. And then you can't have proper version controlling and testing and debugging is completely limited to what that particular platform provides for the developer. And there's a major issue with uh, integration as well. As you know, that we have to connect with internal systems that uh, uh, the um, uh, system of record layers that we have, message brokers, databases, and then uh, the business can't uh, survive by itself uh, in these days. So you have to connect with your partner network and the partner systems are completely out of our control. Whatever the protocols and standards that they are asking, we have to uh, uh, use that and connect to those systems. And uh, on top of these, uh, the traditional systems, now you have to connect with cloud systems as well. So integration is a must. But uh, most of the low-code platforms, the problem is integration is limited to the connectors and the protocols provided by the platform. Uh, so it is limiting the uh, capabilities that uh, the uh, low-code uh, program or within that particular low-code low program, the integration flows that you can create. And there's a vendor lock-in as well. As I said, the code is generated using a DSL uh, and based on the standards that the particular vendor is following. So you have to run or develop, run that particular code within that platform only. Uh, you can't take it out and run in your own platform. So these are kind of the high level issues that uh, uh, we have identified. And there can be many other edge cases that depending on your domain and depending on the development experience that you are looking at, you might face in these platforms. So how we can uh, make this work and what are the solutions? So it is easy. Basically, you have to uh, strike through all the uh, the uh, uh, the problems that we had. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have to find solutions for each and every problem that we explain. So let's take one by one. Uh, so the first problem is about uh, the focus only about the citizen and ad hoc developers. So we had to change that. Uh, we had to uh, bring this uh, concept of the democratization of the development and include the pro developers to this as well. So it has to be an environment for all the developers that they can come and contribute. And it should not stop there. Even there are other people involved, right? Like the business architects, product owners, product managers who's working in these uh, autonomous teams. So they should be able to uh, contribute uh, as well. And there's another concept that I really like, especially when it comes to digital project, uh, the product uh, prototyping and productization. So uh, uh, as an example, that business architect can create the uh, prototype using 
the low code platform and show it to the end user, get the feedback, and then probably hand over it to the uh, pro code developer to productize and release. That is one use case. In another case, uh, a pro code developer, uh, sorry, uh, a citizen developer might start development using low code and he or she might ask a pro code developer to help on a certain thing. And the pro code developer might write the code and then give it back to the, uh, uh, the low code developer or oh, he or she can continue the development from there. So we have to democratize the development. And then the graphical and textual parity. So that is really important. It has to be two way, not one way, that you should be able to uh, change the graphic uh, or you should be able to change the code. Once you change the graphic, code has to change. And if you uh, take the code and change it and put it back, then the graphic or the textual, uh, sorry, the graphical part has to change as well. And then the developer zone, I call the developer zone because uh, that is the productive environment for the developer. That's what developers are looking for. Less meetings, less distractions. They like to build, test, release, get the feedback and go through the same life, life cycle. And if you are a developer, you know how fun it is. Uh, so it is very uh, uh, fun than writing specifications or doing any other work. And we have to make sure that developers are in that zone. To do that, uh, we uh, the local platform should support these uh, standard software development principles. As an example, it has to be a single code base. The code generated from low code or pro code side should be uh, the same code base. As example, if the company is using uh, the uh, uh, GitHub, then you should be able to store all your code there and uh, go through the standard build pipelines that you are using. Then the testing and debugging, uh, yes, the platform should provide certain set of capabilities. Those are the inbuilt capabilities. But then again, uh, if uh, this, uh, uh, the openness is there, then uh, the developer should be able to use the standard tooling as well. Because tooling is playing a, a vital role here uh, because Developers are married to the tools that they are using. So as long as we can enable them to uh, use the existing tools, that's a great deal there as well that will increase their productivity. And then the integration uh, should be uh, supported with a great ecosystem support that most popular databases, mes message brokers, um, uh, known systems, cloud uh, APIs, all these things should support within the ecosystem, as well as create clear extensibility for the developer to extend the capabilities. Because we can't expect a system to support all the protocols and all the standards that's available. And then again, in some cases, even that uh, organization might use a standard, but it might be a, um, a delta of that particular standard that has uh, uh, create a separate version customized for that particular organization. So the extensibility is key. That uh, extensibility should be supported in the local platforms. And then again, how you uh, get rid of the, the vendor locking that is basically following the open standards. So if uh, the uh, code is generated using a standard code or a standard language and not uh, using a vendor specific DSLs, as well as all the protocols like uh, uh, transportation protocols, as well as security protocols, if these things are built using open standards, then the user will not have that vendor locking. He or should be he, she should be able to take the code out from that particular platform, uh, commit to their uh, code base, and then uh, edit it using their favorite editor, and even bring it back to the uh, same uh, low code platform as well. So all these flexibilities there, and then all the edge cases that developers are following will be addressed with that as well. So that is how we can make low code work and make it uh, 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 popular for the pro code developers as well as bring the entire organization collaborate in this development. So that is uh, the, the solution for low code. But then again, will that solve all the problems? Let's uh, take a step back and look at what exactly developers are doing 
today. So we started by telling about this digital experience, and then we talk about how creative these uh, uh, code developers are writing. So what actually they are doing is they are creating these digital products and then continuously delivering it uh, as a digital experience, taking the feedback from the end users and then go through that particular life cycle again and again. Not only that, there's another thing happening. I think that's what uh, Eric mentioned uh, yesterday about the uh, the paradigm shift happening uh, in the industry. Everybody move into cloud. Without cloud, you can't do anything. So uh, two things are happening. Uh, people are moving to the cloud. That is about the cloud migration. At the same time, to utilize the full benefit of the cloud, you have to modernize your applications as well. So it's a two-step process that uh, the uh, people are, uh, while moving to the cloud, they are modernizing the application. So there are many definition to the cloud native applications, as example, 12 factor, and then uh, cloud native uh, computing foundation have this thing called CNAB. Out of all these uh, uh, different type of definitions, I really like this definition done by uh, Gregor Hope in his book called The uh, Cloud Strategy. It's a really good uh, book that I really recommend uh, you to read it. So in his book, he explain about a cloud application contains a business logic and then rest of the quality of services, it's around that communication, how you communicate with it, and then uh, how the APIs, that's the ideal part, connect to that. And then if it is internal communication, then how it uh, leverage the mesh, then the monitoring, and then how it connects with the pipeline, how we take the run times, and then how the um, SRE and then uh, the DevOps things will connect. So all these things are associated with uh, uh, the uh, cloud native application. So while building these digital experiences, developers require to focus on this as well. So it is not easy that uh, developers have to move to this new uh, paradigm. And then if you, uh, like you see in this screen, taking a strategy into value is not that easy. I call it as a messy middle. Planning is very complicated, how you uh, divide the strategy into work items and technology stack is uh, like, it's really complicated. Like if you go to CNCF landscape, you will see many cloud native components. And if you go to Amazon uh, Web Services, you will see many options. So it is not that easy. And then uh, the, when the technology is complicated, when the planning is complicated, you need a set of skill developers to build this thing as well. As you know, there's a shortage of developers in general, as well as it's really hard to find the correct skill set for your domain to build digital applications. It's not only harder to find, it's really difficult to retain them as well. So it's a missing middle. So the outcome of that, uh, moving strategies into value, which is what the business is looking for, as well as the stakeholders of the company looking for, take time. When it's taking time, you will not provide the same results as well as the uh, efforts that you are putting will not pay off well as well. So the organizations require to look at a way to reduce the complexity and at the same time, uh, how you can increase the productivity. And if you look, go back, the developer is kind of the uh, 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 cornerstone for this thing, and they are the one who's creating all these experiences. So it's basically create a frictionless flow for the developers to be productive. And there's a really good uh, metrics called uh, flow efficiency. So uh, basically how flow efficiency works, you compute the productive time and the wait time. So with traditional structures and traditional architectures, layered and uh, uh, layered architectures with uh, central of excellence teams, this was the main problem we had. The wait time is uh, more than the productivity time. Uh, as example, if you can remember those days, when you ask to create a database instance from IT, it takes sometimes a week. And then when we ask to provision a VM, it takes um, a couple of uh, days to do that. So it is the wait time. And if you comp compute that, the wait time is really high. So the idea here, how you can reduce that wait time and increase the, uh, the uh, time that people 
working on these projects and increase the productivity. To do that, organizations are taking different approaches, but uh, as a, a consultant for the digital strategies, what I found, uh, most of the organizations are trying to build platforms. Platform is a really good solution for this problem because uh, the, there are many definitions for the platforms as well. So I took this definition from Dave Gray. Uh, what he's explaining, it's a, a platform, it's a support structure that increases the effectiveness of a community that clearly map to the current organization as well as the architectures that we follow because organizations are distributed today right that we call as the uh, two pizza teams or self-organized teams and then again the architecture is completely distributed with microservices and uh, cloud native standards so you need a platform to connect these different type of groups and then build a community that's what the platform is providing so um as I said, the organizations are building platforms, but the problem is it takes time and then you need special skill sets. So as example, one financial organization that I'm uh, working with, uh, they are building a platform for three years now with, with 300 developers, still it's not done. So it's a huge engineering effort. And if you look at the digital native companies like Amazon, Netflix, and uh, Uber, they have a platform too, but not every organization can find it. So you need to find a platform that suit for your needs as well. So I'm connecting the uh, uh, two discussions that we had uh, about the uh, low code pro code problem and the platform as a solution for productivity. Basically, what I'm recommending here as a solution, uh, use a platform to bridge these two uh, problems. Because if you try to get a platform that can address low code pro pro code problem separately and then another platform uh, to address your other digital needs it's going to be an issue what you need is a digital platform that can address both these problems and bring more and more people into development that's where the platform approach will be a better option to bridge low code and pro code so what is the outcome of this like once you have a platform uh, and increase the productivity, you bridge low code and pro code and bring more and more people into development and have proper collaboration in between these two groups, the, having an effective digital supply chain is the outcome. I think uh, yesterday, uh, Jeff explained clearly how important is a digital supply chain. So this is my admission or my view of the uh, digital supply chain that you have network of systems like those can be internal and external systems that you do integration using low code and pro code. As a result, you expose those capabilities as APIs. And then you uh, build digital applications on top of that by consuming those APIs and providing an experience for your end users. So that experience is the value stream of the organization that is providing value for all the stakeholders, like uh, internal stakeholders, the uh, investors, as well as your end users, and uh, providing a nice uh, system that keep on focusing on value and uh, generating value through digital products by integrating different type of systems. So this is uh, one uh, uh, viewpoint of this problem. Uh, the question is, does this resonate with you? And um, um, the, you might have a different set of problems, but I believe uh, these are common problems that we see in the industry that most of these organizations are facing in the market today. So to walk the talk, uh, we have done a couple of uh, a contribution uh, to these uh, uh, concepts and the problems that I discussed. Uh, the first thing uh, we did as WSO2 introduced this language called Ballerina. Uh, from day one, it is designed for this text and uh, um, uh, graphical parity that you can write a uh, draw a sequence diagram and generate a code, write a code, and then generate the sequence diagram as well. So it's open source uh, project that you can go to ballerina.io and then look at it. So uh, 
while we are addressing that low code pro code problem we are addressing another thing with the microservices and cloud native architecture now middleware is moving to code and infrastructure so infrastructure part is what kubernetes and other cloud providers are providing and code part we are addressing in ballerina so without uh, adding many sidecars to your microservices you can get your um, business logic and then communication uh, with uh, distributed systems can done using ballerina then we did another thing taking that to the next level by building a platform called Corio. so if you go to this url you can access Corio. it's a low code cloud native engineering platform for professional developers that you can uh, build applications inside Corio. currently it's at the beta stage and we welcome everybody to uh, log in and use it and provide feedback for that. Once you go to Corio, you will see that graphical textual parity and in a very uh, programmer friendly um, environment that you will get the graphical uh, uh, representation as well as a complete IDE that support full life cycle of the uh, application development. So these are my contact details that if you wish to uh, continue this discussion, this is my Twitter handler, this is my uh, LinkedIn profile, and I'm a regular blogger in my blog called Architect to Architect. Uh, many information about technology as well as technical drawing. And if you are interested about uh, any WS2 product, you can go to our website as well as uh, we have a booth in this event and um, uh, go there as well. Uh, so um, I hope you enjoy the session and if there are any questions and uh, time permits, I can take a few questions. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Asanka. Uh, so actually, you know, you were in a keynote section to, to introduce the day and this is why we have these two tracks, EPI uh, specifications, because they will be the, 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 middle, the middle interface between what the business can provide and the technical teams how they what they can deliver and also the api driven business track because you know to we'll have more and more e developer citizens uh, citizen developers in, involved so this is why we wanted to have this low code versus pro code talk we consumed all the time for for this we only have like seven minutes for the break uh but yeah thank you very much asanka thanks and, uh, yeah it was great to have you and nice drawings really nice drawings thank uh, you. and for everybody listening uh, we'll be back in